Hello everyone, I'm Tuhon Felix Cortez from FilipinoCombatants.com and I'm here with AwesomeKarateDrills.com to bring you some more awesome drills. Haha. <laughs> Alright, what we're gonna work on is we're gonna still, we're still focusing on our lines of attack. Regardless of um, whether we use the alphabet or we use templates or abecedarios or whatever striking patterns that we use, they're all lines, either of attack or defense, okay? Um, so today what we're going to focus on is uh, 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 our first letter of the alphabet or those first lines of attack, whether it's right to left or, or left to right, I, th I think we're getting the idea, um, or we're changing levels, doesn't matter. What we're going to focus on today is like, a, like a developing rear strikes like this and then switching footwork, okay? We have, uh, in Filipino combatants, we do a lot of footwork. One of the footwork that we use is forward triangle, so we go here and like we saw in the group dynamics drill. Okay, this is our forward triangle. Okay, we can go into reverse triangle, we can do some sidestepping, some ducking, uh, we also have a lot of uh, rolling and uh, uh, ground techniques that we use. Um, but we're gonna use this footwork, all right, the uh, linear, to show a linear uh, strike pattern using these lines, right, that one, two, three, or three on the backhand, okay? For example, if I'm in my guard here, I'm going to step back and get into a ready position as I'm going to do a form. And I'm going to strike my one and two. That's my portion. On three, I'm going to change uh, directions and go the other way so I can create another uh, 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 line going in the opposite direction. So I go one, two, and then three, and then back. So basically what I'm doing is I'm stepping forward one, stepping forward two, and then turning, crossing this leg in the back, like we call this like a, a diamond stance, and then we're gonna strike down the middle three, and then we open up into kind of like a back stance position, right, uh, uh, to start from the other side. So we go one, two, three, and back, okay? And the continuous flow would be All right, now, what we could also do is double up on the strikes or wind up for power strikes. For example, if I wanted to do this line, right, this number one here, this line, and wind up for a power strike, I would wind mm, and strike. Wind, mm, okay, that generates more power. If I wanted to hit double with it, I pop, pop, I'd make it small, I wouldn't wind up as much, I'd make it two quick ones. Doubling up, what that creates is a circular motion, so we're developing a twirling drill. The inside twirl is thumb down, palm down, and we're twirling on the inside of the body, okay? Keeping it away from the body, okay? Like this, this is our inside twirl, okay, from here. So I'm extending to strike and turning the wrist, okay? And I wanna keep my fingers, especially those two, wrapped around that stick, so I can get that motion on the inside like this, okay? Right, and I wanna try to complete a big twirl. How many fingers or how I grip the stick, it really doesn't matter because we really don't wanna have that, that full stick like that, you know, that death con grip, because it, it really like, um, will stop the flow of the twirl. So what we wanna do is kinda like release it and grip it, okay? And you just work with it and you'll see how you find it. That's an inside twirl. From here, palm up, it's an outside twirl. The outside twirl, when we're striking, is down this way. So we're twirling down on the outside, so the palm is up, and the stick kind of like falls to the front and on the side of the body like this. Okay, so we're moving this way. That's a outside twirl, because it's on the outside of the body. Okay, again, I open my hand, and I grip that stick, loosen and re-grip, to get that twirl motion there like that, okay? So you have your inside and your outside, your inside and your outside, okay? Now when you do this, you're doubling up on your, and that's how you create the twirl. Okay, the other one is inside, outside like this. That would be like your, your center lines there, all right? So we go to guard position, all right? From here, I like to pull back and get ready and then we go to our twirls. One, two, and three, and ready and one, two, and three, and ready. And one, two, three, and ready. One, two, three, twirl. Now, if I go high, it's because I'm going for that power strike. If I keep it low, 
and short is because I'm going for the double strike. So when you understand the mechanics or your goal and what you want to achieve, then that's how you decide, well, why is he going so big? He's open. Well, because in order to create power, I have to open it like that. I can create power by keeping it closed, right? But it's a different motion. So we use one to double up on strikes and the other one to really create the strike that's gonna hit that home run for you. Thank you for joining us on awesomecrowdedrills.com and I'll see you next time. I'm excited to be here working on paddle drills today. The first ones we're gonna work on, we're gonna work on some just warm ups just to get everything rocking and rolling. So everybody stand up to you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Right, listen, I want you guys to pretend that this floor is like a spring. Okay, we're working on developing our fast twitch muscles, which is going to help with our kicking, being explosive, and being lightning fast. Okay, here we go, champions. Ready? Oh, we're going to do 10 of them. Ready? And go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Awesome job, Lex. Here we go, Emma Gemma. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Awesome job, guys. Listen, don't let these girls outwork us, Josh. Get those arms pumping. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great job, Josh. All right, Matt, let's go, let's go. Don't let the person in front of you outwork you today, guys. I need 100%. Remember, the way that we practice is going to be the way that we perform, champions. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Go fast, Matt. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great job, Matt. Here we go, Brig. Get those arms pumping, girl. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Awesome job. All right, let's go, Garen. Come on, G. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great job. All right, now try to do a little faster than you did the last time. Let's see who can pump them the best. I'm timing you guys. Ready? Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Tough time to beat. Here we go, Emma. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Way to keep pumping, girl. All right, Josh, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, here we go, Matt. Let's get some heat in those feet, baby. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great job. Those were your best ones. All right, Bria, let's show these guys how it's done. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, let's get a little pep in that step, Garen. Here we go. Last ones. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great job, guys. Everybody do me a favor. Take one hand. Give yourselves a big pat in the back. Great warm up with the knee drills. Now, here's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to show a variation of this drill where you can have them working with partners and motivating each other. Okay, guys, let's get in our teams. Two lines real fast face each other. Yes, sir? Good, good, good. And Bria and Garen, slide down just a little tiny bit. That's perfect right there. And you guys slide this way one step. Awesome. And Oshkosh, be Josh, and Super Bria. Why don't you guys grab your pads behind you? Grab your pads, Josh. And then boom, there you go, Lex. Now, when you guys hold the pads, choke up on the paddles a little bit. And you're going to hold them out waist high for your partner. Turn them on there. Turn your hands over just like that. Hold them out waist high for your partners. Other guys come in nice and close. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Here we go, ready? We're gonna pump those knees, same thing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10 and then what's gonna happen is Garen's gonna take one step back and he's gonna run down here as fast as he can. Everybody shifts down one. We're gonna go two times around, take a deep breath in. Now remember, whenever we breathe, we we'll always breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. All right, let's get ready to fire out. Good focus, guys. And the guys that are holding the pads, you guys are gonna focus on your partner too. Make sure they're working hard and pump them up. Let's go, let's get motivated, ready? When I say go, on your marks, get set and go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and shift right away. Let's go, Garen, down here, fast, 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 and get ready and go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and step back, Matt, and go. Let's pump them out, ready, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, good, and shift. Let's go, let's go one more time around, but we'll just do five times this time. Ready, here we go. Let's see who can do them the fastest. Yo, Beastie Boys, don't let this woman war outwork us today. Just five times. Ready, Garen? Ready, Matt? Here we go, ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, and shift right away, right away. Go, 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 slide and go. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. One more time, last ones. Here we go, ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, and shift again. Emma Gemma down here. Face your partner. Attention. 
Bow. Guess what? Now it's paybacks. Now hand the pads over to the other guys. Good job, excellent. And in Taekwondo, we always make sure when we bow and when we receive things, right? We take one hand under our elbow and bow, hand the pads over. All right, here goes paybacks. Now choke up on those a little bit, Em. I'm just gonna shift your hand right there, slide that over like that. Slide that just like that. Let me see, Matt, you wanna shift your hand up here just like this, slide up, put your hand up further, choke up on it, just like a baseball bat. Just like this way, you have better control of it. Good, so it doesn't knock it out of your arms. And same thing, here, slide your arm up a little bit. Same thing, good, good, good. Now you have better control and Brea brings those super knees up there nice and strong. All right, guys, listen, now you don't let these other guys outwork you. We're gonna go to the same thing, we're gonna go 10, and then you're gonna shift down, Brea, ready? Hold them out, waist high, ready, and go. 10, 9, 8, 7, let me help, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and shift, and shift, and shift. Quick, quick, all the way down, ready, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, hold in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, good, and shift. I'm gonna help you just a little bit, and here we go, ready, and go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and shift. Keep pushing, keep pushing, take a deep breath. We're just gonna do five now. Now we kick in the turbo jets, ready, here we go, go. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, shift. Quick, 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 fast, 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 here we go. Ready and go. Five, four, three, two, one, and shift, shift, shift. Go, 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 last ones, ready and go, Josh. Five, four, three, two, one, and shift right away. Fast, 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 and face your partner. Attention, bow. Say peace out, sauerkraut. Peace out, sauerkraut. And that's just two variations of our high knee drills working with the paddles to develop our speed and fast twitch muscle, which is gonna lead into some of our other drills further on in the taping. Hi there, my name is Justin Morris, and I'm a proud contributor of AwesomeKarateDrills.com. Today I wanna to talk about the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guard and how we can implement a guard drill uh, if you're a student of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or grappling, or if you're a martial art instructor and you wanna include this in your academy. One thing I really like about the guard drill is it's a way that we can get newer students to wrestle and we can kind of take out the submission holds, we can take out a lot of the other positions, and it's a lot safer. And one of the hardest things as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor is new students coming into class, they don't really know a lot, nobody likes to lose, and they go at it really crazy trying to break each other's arms and choke each other, and one person gets hurt and one person ends up sticking with the program, and with that rate you're going to lose 50% of your clients, so that's not very good. So I implement the guard drill every single class. It's really good to learn um, body unity, how to work your arms and your legs. And it's very good for overall jujitsu to learn balance, core strength, and it's great for student retention. Again, we can use this drill instead of live grappling and it will give our students a chance to wrestle, gain core strength, gain base and balance, learn fundamental jujitsu without the dangers of getting submitted or getting injured in class. It's even good for extremely advanced students as well. So in this guard drill, I'm learning how to work my legs like they're my arms. So from the close guard position, I can work my legs on the biceps, which we call spider guard. I can work them on the hips, which we call open guard. I can work them underneath the legs. We call that butterfly guard, or I can have just one leg trapped, and that's called a half guard position. So again, if my legs are locked, it's a closed guard. When my legs open up, we have an open guard. Here's the butterfly guard. The legs go underneath. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a spider guard. Underneath, we have the butterfly guard. And here is the half guard position, right? And now my arms are going to try to control his sleeves and also his jacket. If he doesn't have a uniform, I'm going to grab his wrists and the back of his neck. Now, at any time, my partner can stand up. Let's move back just a little bit, right? So if my partner stands up, I'm again, you trying to get the grips, feet to the biceps, feet to the hips, behind the legs, and moving my legs around. And now we start this drill with my partner slowly moving while I'm transitioning my legs to different positions. Go ahead, Ryan. Now, once your students are aware of how you can flow 
and start to use your legs, just like they're another set of hands, we can wrestle a little harder. And one person is trying to pass the guard, getting out of the legs, while the other person is trying to make the person fall, or we call a sweep. So this time I'll have Ryan start on his back. And now, we're gonna go about half speed just to show you guys, but I'm gonna kind of move around a little harder this time, and he's gonna try to attempt to sweep me. Okay, ready, go. And there's the sweep, he's got it. And we're going a little slow, just so you guys can see. But again, my job on top is to try to pass the guard. Ready, go. Here comes the guard pass. So this is a great drill that you can do with your students, really at any level. It's a safe drill. You can take the submissions out of it so there isn't really a loser. But at the same time, both students are working their legs, their arms are getting a good cardio workout, and they're learning base. And most importantly, they're learning good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hi, I'm Tony with AwesomeKarateDrills.com. This next activity is called Pyramid Dodgeball. So what you're going to do is you're going to give each side 21 cups. Now this is what it's going to look like when they finally build it. So they're going to have to work together as a team. So that's what I mean by a team, guys. Not, not just one person putting it together, but everybody working together to build it. So everybody has to put a cup at some point. Does everybody understand? Now, whoever gets it built first, you guys can race out and grab the dodgeballs. Now, let's just say, Zachary, you guys get done first. It's built. It doesn't fall over. You have to wait five seconds to make sure that it's nice and stable. And then you guys can run up and grab the dodgeballs. Now, once you have the dodgeballs, you can just wait over here on your side for, those, uh, for that other team to finish. Okay? So the faster you get it done, you're going to be one step ahead because now the real game starts. The object of the game is to try to knock the other team's pyramid over. Okay? But you have to have every cup lying on its side. So let's say the game started, boom, you guys are throwing it at the other side. Not one cup can be like this or like this. They all have to be laying on their side in order for your team to win the round. Does everybody understand how that works? Okay, ready, here we go. Actually, let me take these down. When I say go, you guys go ahead and start building and then the first team to get it done, you guys race out and grab the dodgeballs and then wait for the other team to complete it. Once the other team's completed, then you can start throwing. Then it's like regular dodgeball rules. The only difference is you can't get out. So if you get hit, somebody catches the ball, it doesn't matter. You can block your cups to make sure that they don't get knocked over. That's the whole objective. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Remember to work together as a team to get it built. You got to know how many is across the bottom. Make sure that it stays straight because if it's not straight when you start, it's going to be tough to build it up the way that it's supposed to be. Good. Oh, looks like Lexi's the only one that's doing anything. You guys have to participate as well. Everybody needs to put a cup somewhere. Very good. Remember, this is a teamwork drill, so it can't be just one person. You guys all have to work together. All right, there's his built. Four, five seconds, stable. All right, so they got it. You got one cup, do you have, uh, oh, <laughs> you got two stacked. Now you gotta redo it. Let's go, let's go quick, quick, quick. You guys can do it. That's tough, right? Remember, take your time starting. Make sure that the line is straight as you're going across. Leave enough room in between if you have to scoot some out to give yourself more of an edge. This could be a drill all by itself. Cup stacking. Okay, get ready, guys. Oh my God. <laughs> you did it again. Oh, this time the whole thing didn't fall. Remember, guys, think about what you're doing, work together, try to figure it out. Now it's got to stay there. Game on. Go, you got to block it, guys. <laughs> get in front of it. Nice, good. Remember, you can't come across that center line. I'm standing on the center line, so you got to throw from there. Remember, you can't hold it. Whoa! You got almost all of them down in one shot. You got six that are still standing. 
Very good, very good. Now you can run this drill until all of the cups are down, or you can put a time limit on it and then count to see. Whoa, look at that. And you had a couple that stacked. Now this team's in the lead over here. You guys have more knockdown than they do, it looks like. Let's go guys. Oh, we only got three left. Let's go quick, 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 quick. Come on, you got 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, <laughs> bowling style. Five, Dragonfly, you're way across the line, buddy. You can't cross that line. Four, three, two, and time. Freeze, everybody stop right where you're at. All right, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cups standing. How many of you guys have over here? Three cups standing winners on round number one. Go ahead and stack all the cups back up and leave them right where they were. Quick, you only have 10 seconds to stack them up. Nine, eight, no, not in the pyramid style, guys. Just stack them all up. Five, four seconds left. Three, two, nice. Now let's switch sides. Let's line the dodgeballs back up in the center. Let's go. Now you can do this in a, like a pyramid style or you can give them more cups and have them build like a, like a big castle or something like that. If you wanted to play castle knockover or something like that, that would just be a variation. You can come up with a lot of different ways to do this activity. Okay, let's run this one one more time so you guys can get a little payback. Ready, go. Let's stack them up. Now, if you're running big groups here, you've got 10, 15 kids on each side. Give them, you know, twice the amount of cups. Let them build two pyramids. Split them up into two or three teams. Give them, you know, three pyramids. Doesn't really matter. These cups are so cheap that you can, you know, have these all over your floor on each side. Just making it, you know, more exciting for them and, you know, to keep it changing. You might want to start with one and then as the game progresses, then, you know, add more and more and more. Come up with different designs. All right, here we go, game is on. Remember, you can't pass this line that I'm standing on, so keep an eye out where you're throwing. Remember, you're aiming for the cups. You can block it, nice, good block. Oh, there we go. Remember, it's also bouncing off the wall and coming back at it, so you gotta watch it coming from the other side. Who's it gonna be? Who's gonna knock it over first? It looks like it's pretty good defense this time. Whoa, there they go. Quick, quick, quick. All right, there's another one. All right, you guys have some ground. Oh, almost all of them in one shot. There's only three left over here. Come on, you guys can do it. You got 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five seconds, four, three, two, and time. Excellent job. Everybody stack those cups up. You got 10 seconds to get your team's cups stacked back up in one pile. Nine, eight, seven. Work together as a team. And once you're done, come right here in the center and take a knee. Six. Five, come on, you got four seconds left. Three, everybody back in the middle. Two, bring your cups with you. And time, set up nice and straight. Awesome job, guys. So that's how you play pyramid dodgeball. Come up with some variations to this. Give them more cups, have them come up with different designs on each one. I'm Tony with AwesomeKarateDrills.com. Thanks for being a member. Hi, I'm Brian Schultz with Awesome Karate Drills. Dot com. We're back again. I'm going to continue from this down block series. Um, what it's going to do is I'm going to just keep evolving on technique here, trying to ad adhere to principle, which I will bring up hopefully at some point in the near future. So still coming from Tony putting his left hand on my chest. If I turn and grab any set of fingers, and I'm using a different hand this time, this will give me a certain body response. This isn't necessarily the body response I want, because Tony, if you really wanted to, could hit me from here. So starting from scratch again, I'm going to pin his hand, leaving this hand out of the picture just for clarity, to get him to this position. I can grab his shoulder to do basically another standard down block. I'm on top of his elbow. Now this is what the down block would look like with him involved. <clears throat> but this is not the end all be all technique right now. This hand is not involved, just so you can see this. This gives me the position. Most kata would follow up with a punch. The punch is kind of obvious at this point. If you wanted to step, you could also do something a little bit more aggressive. Not necessarily needed right now. So to do that again, I'm going to use my opposite hand, grab the opposite set of fingers. I would down block here. Keeping his wrist in my elbow, on top of his elbow, and press down. That puts him in a position where he can't really do a whole lot for self-defense. Um, this would give me a position that he also can't do something further. Grapplers would be on the ground and more comfortable. You just drive him <clears throat> and now he's not able to do anything. Then as we get up, there's a series of things we can do. 
Um, this can turn into a sort of flow of joint manipulation. Uh, what I can do is starting from the original one, closing on this side. Let's turn around so they can see that. <clears throat> so what this looks like is when I'm closing here, I'm grabbing these two fingers and I down block. In the event that this doesn't work or it slips, I can switch hands. This is another valid joint manipulation. If this one doesn't work or he starts to slip from this, we can do what we call a pistol grip. It makes him kind of want to stand up a little bit. As he stands up, I can follow this around, take these last two fingers where we started, put him back down on the ground again. Um, this is a way of kind of ensuring that he stays out of mind to keep him attacking. <clears throat> that he is always in the mind of pain, even if I slip. Even though I slipped there, he still forgot to move. So if I allow the Tony just to keep tapping on my shoulder, just keep tapping. This could signify that he can punch me while he's doing this. But you notice he forgets to punch. Keep tapping my shoulder. So as he's tapping, keep tapping. It's not really possible for him to keep in enough mind to be able to do this. I don't even want to. <laughs> <laughs> so if we turn, <clears throat> you start to see a little bit of detail here that I'm essentially trying to touch my forearm to his, pressing on the back of his hand, which we'll talk about in a second. This pistol grip, I pull his thumb like a gun, pew, turning his hand, wedging my finger between his fingers. This gives me this manipulation. I tend not to say lock. Joints are very hard to lock in position, but we can manipulate them by bending tendons using the nerves in the hand, which is why he's dropping so quite easily. Um, this can also be a down block if you wanted to get into this. Um, this position still can be used for many things. In the event that he did a wrist grab from here, this could be as simple as me getting his hand and doing the down block. I'm still in the same position, even though it didn't look like I did the same thing to him. Um, so that's it for right now. We'll continue from there. There's lots of detail I can cover. So I'm Brian Schultz with AwesomeKarateDrills.com. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit. Hey guys, I'm Tony with AwesomeKarateDrills.com. Today we're here with Ed Bailey. We're talking about some wrestling skills. And in this little series, we're going to be talking about grips. Okay, so can you give me a little insight on some of the different types of grips that you might see and some of the benefits um, that may outweigh some of the others? Yeah, I, I traditionally, if somebody grabs my collar tie, like here, grabs my collar tie, what I'll do is I'll take my hand and I'll take, traditionally what guys do is they just try to pull this off. What I'll do is I'll, I'll turn this downward so that my knuckles are facing inside to his body. Okay, and the reason why I do that is because I've now taken him, his ability to grab either one of my legs because all I have to do is guide this out. Okay, and I also, it allows me to go into my Russian tie series. Okay, where I can work from here, I can work from here, I can work a lat throw, I can do anything from here. I can fold under, I can actually roll under his legs, put his hand up his crotch and, and roll him to his back over here. I can do a lot of different things here. So um, I want you to understand it. That, and and it's, it's just as easy to catch as the guy comes around. So, you know, you just got to get used to it. And you're doing that little twist. You're getting, some, getting a little twist here. So, and he's not, he's not going to be used to that. Okay. His natural progression is going to be to pull that arm back. When he pulls that arm back, there's my leg shot. So what, he, what he's done is he's, he's pulled his arm back and he's allowed me to get my leg shot at that point. And what I'll do also is he'll grab my hand and I don't pull my arm back. I take the Y of my hand and I go straight up here. I transfer it. Now I'm on the side of him. I'm on a Russian tie side. I can either work from here. I got punch. I got throat strikes. I got, you know, I can fold in. I can come around the, I can come around the back. Okay, drop down on the leg. There's a ton of stuff you can do off of here based off of this Russian tie series.
So, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to get around the corner. I want to get around the side. You never want to be facing somebody straight, straight on. That's why boxers always go at an angle. So as soon as he grabs my arm, I immediately come up. And he can grab my arm tight. He's got my arm tight. I immediately come up. I break that off. Transfer here. And then I'm in good position. Okay. I can go here. I can come in, leg lace it. Roll this way. It's called a Merkle. Take it out. Okay. I can throw him this way. I can step inside and throw him backwards. A lot of different things you can do. But I'm on the side of him. So it's a much better situation. And so if I grabbed him, he would just take the Y of his hand, come up, transfer, go over, and do whatever he had to do on the side of me. My legs don't move that way. Legs don't go this way. Legs go this way. The block out, down block. Legs don't go that way. So that's a big, big important part of it. The other part is, is the way you're going to do your grip. Some people do their hand grips like this. And they're taught, and they're taught to hide their thumbs. The problem is, is if you get somebody who's real strong, you get them in a the cradle. If you got any kind of fingernails, you're going to pull the skin right off your fingernails. And you're, going to, you're not going to wrestle for a week until that skin grows back. And it hurts. Okay? The next one is here. The problem with here is, when I'm on this leg here, he can kick that leg back and take my hands away. The third one is here where I'm locking bone on bone actually what I do is I go here turn my hands like a butterfly and lock in this is what I do so I'm bone on bone so if I'm here on here and he goes to kick that leg back oh, he ain't going nowhere I'm tighter I'm six inches closer to him than I would be here I'm going from here to here to here, I'm six inches closer to him. If I'm, box, if I'm body locking him, if I'm body locking him and I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here. It's a big difference. Oh yeah, big difference, okay? And what it does is it allows you to turn and just be where you wanna be. You know what I mean? You just get tall with him. Okay, here, he pushes my hips out, okay? Here. You can still push my hips out. Okay? Here, you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> it's all me. All right? I can lick his ear. <laughs> I can do whatever I want to do. You know, it's up to him. Oh. It's up to him how much he likes me or I like him. <laughs> okay? So, that's what, uh, that's, uh, it's very, very, grip is very, very important in, in, uh, in, uh, in athletics. So, the ear licking will be in the next video series. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. We like, we like to, we like to, you know, keep it fun, especially when I, you know, work with the kids. There you go. So. There you go. Awesome. So I'm Tony with AwesomeKarateDrills.com, and uh, there's some information on some grips.